Hi guys. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's a bit surreal for me because uh, last year I was an attendee at the conference, not the workshop, but the conference. And uh, this year I'm on the other side, so it's uh, I can't believe it's happening. But yeah, I got to pinch myself. <laughs> uh, but. Again, uh, thank you so much for participating this morning. I'm going to put all the work in the workshop. So you're going to do a lot of sketching today. Let me put it mildly. Uh, and I'm going to try to make this as fun as possible because the topic is something close to my heart, which is storytelling. Um, Sorry. So, oh, OK. Sorry. OK. Um, yeah, before we begin, just uh, apart from what they already told you, I work at Property Guru. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a journey for me, f uh, going from a graphic designer to becoming a product designer now. Uh, and that journey is also part of my story, which I'll be sharing through my presentation today. So. Yeah, this is a general agenda of what we'll do today. So uh, we'll start with why it matters, why storytelling matters to you or should matter to you. And uh, we'll go into uh, how to build a narrative and about adding emotion, because no story is a story without emotion. And then finally, just close off with thoughts about what will this look like in the future. OK. So why does it matter? There's this really interesting quote that uh, was that I came across from John Maida uh, in his report, uh, Tech in Asia, uh, sorry, Design in Tech report. And um, he basically is talking about the role of design in organizations today. That as designers, we care about the complexity of design. But to the rest of the org, it's like, huh, what? What are you talking about? So <laughs> there's this constant struggle that we face, uh, whether design sits inside the org, like in the case of uh, internal agency design, I'm sorry, in-house designers versus outside the org, which is like agencies or consultancies, right? So um, no matter which side you're on, there's a constant struggle. And making people care, that's the goal here, right? How do you make these people care? Because design matters, and we know that. But how do you explain that to the rest of the org? So basically, storytelling, that's the answer. And uh, so we need stories to do three main things. The first one is change perspectives, right? As human beings, we are all sort of risk averse. We don't like change. We don't like things to, we like things to be the way exactly how it is. So in order to convince people that this is the right thing to change, it takes a lot of uh, convincing. And being able to say those things convincingly as a story, that really matters in shifting people's mindsets. And uh, the rest of today, you will learn uh, techniques to do that. Yeah. So the second one is about um, basically building empathy. Uh, as designers, we, we are the ones responsible for imagining how things are going to be, I, I'm sorry, imagining, looking at how things are and imagining how things are going to be in the future. So before we do that, we need people to care and change their perspective. And the next thing, in order to change their perspective, we need to build their empathy. So empathy is not just about your users, it's empathy about the end goal that we all want to achieve. There's an end business goal to everything that we are designing towards, right? So to build that empathy, it takes uh, time and effort to convince people. So that's another important aspect. And uh, another great thing about storytelling is um, it really taps into our emotions. So uh, in order, like as human beings, we are um, we are all connected through stories, and the uh, lights in our brains go off. Like Different parts of our brains actually light up uh, when you're emotionally connected to a story versus just sort of passively listening to factual statements. And uh, that's really the power of empathy. 
and then finally we need stories to inspire action so i'm have you guys uh, heard the greta thunberg uh, you must have watched the news clipping of her going how dare you anyone yes yeah okay so <laughs> Did, did that inspire you to do something? I mean, at, in some way or form? Because you really feel her emotions through the video, right? When she's, she's like, how dare you? And she's really pissed off. And you can feel that emotion, the raw emotion coming through. And that's basically the power of connecting to someone's story. And that will inspire you to take some action in some way or form in your life. Moving on. So I'm just going to talk about a very cool example of how a company has used storytelling in their uh, process, which is at Airbnb, right? So this was back in the early days of Airbnb, where their CEO, Brian Chesky, he, over Christmas, he was uh, reading Walt Disney's uh, biography. And in the biography, it explained how when Disney was creating Snow White, it was sort of remarkable for the time because uh, not every animator in his uh, company knew what they wanted to achieve. They were going to change the way Disney was going to sort of uh, build uh, the Snow White movie, right? So they were going to build it frame by frame, and that was the very first time that they were going to do it. So in order to explain that to the animators at Disney, uh, Walt sort of brought them all together. They drew out the storyboards of roughly what the storyline is going to look like, and that changed how the animators understood what's the vision for what they wanted to do. Similarly, a light bulb sort of went off at, uh, on for Brian uh, Chesky, and he said, hey, let's try this for our brainstorming session. So he brought together different parts of his company. And uh, what they did was, uh, if you look at the background here, they sort of hired Pixar artists um, to sketch out each part of the process, right? So from what they imagined it to begin with until the end of the experience of booking, uh, uh, sorry, a listing, and then going and staying at an Airbnb, the entire experience was sketched out in the form of storyboards. And uh, that sort of uh, revealed some brilliant insights for them when they did it as an activity, uh, because one of the insights what they discovered was it, it's not just a website. So this, this product, it needs to be mobile first. Because they realized that people are not going to be on their laptops when you go down to a place, right? It's a physical experience. It cannot be that I, it ends with me booking something. So similarly, uh, the other sort of insight that went uh, came about was uh, the connection between offline and online. It became more apparent as they sort of storyboarded step by step how this is going to go. And uh, yeah, basically, this changed their strategy for their business. It uh, became about being mobile first. So Airbnb has an experience. Today, you experience it the way it is because at some point in their time, in back in the time when they were figuring out their strategy, they sort of went, hey, let's look at all the experience end to end. And, and because they did it collectively as a group inside a room and sort of storyboarded it out, it, it's a shared vision of where they wanted to go with it. So it kind of ticked all the boxes of what I just spoke about. Uh, about changing uh, perspectives and then building empathy for the shared goal, right? So that inspired them to take the action to build mobile first. Um, yeah, so the ex uh, experience director, she said it best, which is if you're going to build a feature that nobody has ever built before, think about using storyboarding or storytelling, right? So it's, it's great to inspire action um, amongst your stakeholders. OK, with that, just because everyone's like, I don't know, I can't gauge the room. Everyone's very serious. So I want you to not be so serious, because the point of today is to have fun. And um, yes, we'll, I'm going to tell you what this activity is, yeah? Force connections. So at Pixar, I'm sorry, at Airbnb, they hired Pixar artists. I can't hire Pixar artists. I'm going to make you guys into artists. So um, you'll need some A4 papers, which are in front of you. And 
pens or whatever, Sharpies, whatever is available to draw with. So your product for today, we're very familiar with. Hopefully you're wearing some underwear, yeah? So <laughs> I'm going to flash some words right after this. Um, and you're going to draw, think about the word and draw what is that going to look like. So for example, if I said the word is patriotic, then you're going to draw an underwear that has flags. Maybe it's hoisted. I don't know. It's up to you to imagine, right? This is just a warm up, so don't take it too seriously. And you're going to get like two minutes per word. So it's meant to be fun. So just let your brain go loose and just think about whatever is the thing that comes in your mind and just draw it. Yeah? Are you guys ready? You have pens and papers? And then I'm going to show you the words in one minute. Okay, let's see. Thumbs up if you're ready, just so I know everyone's ready. Okay. Still waiting on this side, yeah? <laughs> okay, let's begin. The first word is disposable. Easy, right? I'm going to start you off easy and then make it more complex as we go along. So think about disposable as a word and what does that underwear look like? What material is it made of? What, how, how do you wear it? How do you dispose of it? Think about those aspects as you sketch. I'm going to play some music just because it's too silent. <laughs> okay, go guys. <laughs> you, you're not sure what to do? So the word was uh, disposable. So if you can think of ways that would turn into a product, right? So disposable can be material, so it's made of paper, or ways that you can dispose of it. Does it crumple up? How do you? So just imagine what that underwear would look like and just go for it, yeah. Any questions, just feel free to raise your hand and it'll come over. next word you can continue sketching if you're not done but I'm going to move on to the next word which is skeuomorphic what does that look like do you guys know what skeuomorphic means it's skeuomorphic is like it looks as real to a object as possible so if it's human skin or I don't know wherever you sit maybe the underwear changes color or texture I don't know could be anything right Skeuomorphic could also be texture. You know, Apple's early iPod, uh, I, sorry, all of their UI was very skeuomorphic. It tried to mimic what the real looked like. So think about that. So how does that translate to underwear? Change the music. Yeah. Sure. Very serious. Okay, cool. Oh, 
Ooh, next word, mechanical. What does a mechanical underwear look like? <laughs> Which parts of it are mechanical? I don't know. Remember, the, there's a human who's going to wear these underpants, yeah? So consider that as you sketch. Okay, next word, therapeutic. <laughs> How is an underwear therapeutic? Yeah, it gets harder as we go along, right? Think about what happens during therapy. You get a massage, you feel relaxed. What does that translate into for underwear? <laughs> yeah, I, I see you looking puzzled. Just let loose. The idea is to just think about random things coming together. So don't try too hard to imagine it to be very real. It's supposed to be sort of ideating, right? So go crazy. Combine words if you feel like it, yeah? I'm, it's not in the brief, but up to you if you want to combine words. Mechanical and therapeutic, for example. Massage chair. Okay, I'm going to go to the next word. Oops, it's a bit broken, but the word is fluffy. Fluffy underwear. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> what if you combine fluffy and mechanical? Or <laughs> I don't know. Could be fun. I'm going to walk around a bit. Peek at what everyone's doing. <laughs> Cloud, yeah. nice. <laughs> this is not a test, I'm just speaking. <laughs> Ew. No one's thinking of Iron Man, mechanical, really? <laughs> okay, last word. 
alien. <laughs> My favorite. Alien underwear. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing as I was writing these words for the workshop going, yeah, they're going to really confu get confused what to do. <laughs> but the point is to just let your imagination go loose. Okay, since we're running a bit ahead of the time I had planned, can we have one person in the table share their idea? Like one per table. It would be fun, right? Don't describe what one of these is. So we have six. So I'll just randomly pick each table and then one of you present, yeah? Let's start with therapeutic. Someone from this table, therapeutic. Um, so my underwear is kind of the same, uh, made of the same material as those um, disposable ones at uh, therapy center. Okay. Um, but the only difference is that it emits lavender and sandalwood scent. Ooh. And it also helps to play therapy music. Oh, musical underwear! Wow, that's that's something. Okay, cool. Next word. Disposable, someone from here. Boy. Just take, <laughs> go. Uh, I imagine that the underwear that can match from plants or flowers. Okay. So that it can, it's easy to dispo uh, dispose. Ah, I see. So it, it withers like a flower after you're done. Yeah, it's like our ancestor went before. Ah, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, next word. Um, did we do skeuomorphic? Oh, what did I ask? No, we did therapeutic. Okay, skeuomorphic. Next one, skeuomorphic. Someone from here? <coughs> Anyone? Skeuomorphic. What's the best one? Uh, it's not mine. Uh, Don't worry about being the best. It's supposed to be fun. My skeuomorphic is a is a toddler who looks like a main face. Sorry? He's a toddler who looks like a main man. Oh, a toddler who looks like man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about Fluffy? Someone from that table over there. Fluffy? <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm not going to. It's not a presentation, it's not a real product. <laughs> Alright, so fluff, our fluffy, my, the fluffy, the fluffy underwear that I made is pretty boring. It's just a regular underwear with feathers. Feathers, okay, feathers. It yeah, must still look uncomfortable for <laughs> Interesting. Okay, last one. Alien. Uh, which side? There? How about the last table in the corner? See you guys laughing. I want to know what's funny. <laughs> Um, I made uh, an un underwear made of an octopus. <laughs> octopus? Wow. So the octopus is wrapped around your body. Okay. Uh, oh, octopusy, I get it. Haha. <laughs> Interesting. Anyone else who want to share, just feel free to put your hand up. We'll come over to you. Oh, okay, cool. Back there. I would like to share also about this possible. Okay. I have drawn something like tissue. Tissue? Because, yes, just like the tissue, toilet paper. Ah. And then you can have the continuous design. So when you want to use some disposable one, you can decide how many. Right, okay. Yeah. So you just pull how many ever you and need and then yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. Or travel or, or other. Nice, travel underwear, <laughs> like it. <laughs> Imagine all the space you'll save in your luggage, right? Instead of, I mean, underwear doesn't occupy that much given. 
unless you carry a lot like me okay uh we're kind of done with the first activity i hope this uh sparked something in your mind and you're awake now cuz i'm going to do a bit of talking and then it will lead up to the next activity again cuz i have three activities planned for today and that was the first one yeah okay so next we were talking about stories and why it mattered and now we are going to go into the building of a story right so how do you the first part about storytelling is the narrative how do you build that so as designers we have the potential to sort of transfer information from one mind to another mind right because uh, this this was not said by me it was someone wiser ellen lupton who is a author and a graphic designer as well and um, i think this is this was inspiring to read um, just because it's uh, yeah just think about it you have you have all the potential to influence someone and change what they're thinking right that's kind of your superpower yeah what is the right word would be transform Trans transform information not transfer it transform sure yeah that's that's true yeah. i think first level is transfer just cuz i'm talking about narrative but yes of course transform right. eventually through the narrative you share mm -hmm. of course Okay. So, to write mystery novels, authors they sort of plot backwards, right? They they start with saying how would the killer hide the weapon? How did they kill? Why did they kill? And where does the detective come into the picture? So, these are the kind of plot lines that they think about as they plot a narrative for obviously a story. and as designers to build any product or service i forgot the word service there but you kind of do the same you're plotting your website you have a site map you know how things connect so you're building the narrative as you go as well right um and any absorbing story unfolds over time and just like that every product that you interact with over time needs to have a good story so you keep your audience captive and that requires you to carefully plot your narrative it helps us to create memories and forge connections so i'm going to talk about five story ingredients that make up a good plot or five ingredients you need to build a good story yeah so the first one is an arc it basically it goes back to uh, the structure of stories in general it has a beginning a middle and an end and having that three um, structure in place is very important what happens in between is part of the story but there should always be a beginning a middle and an end otherwise you'll be like huh what so think about that when you're explaining things to people right you always set the context you talk about why and then the how and then the what so the, it kind of you'll see the number 3 appearing many times in my presentation as well okay and then the next one is about change it's about transforming a situation or a character or some part of your interface that transforms right so that uh, aspect of your story is also very important the third one is theme theme uh ties the story together it sort of is the overarching part of your story it serves a greater purpose there's a reason why the story connects with people so that's usually the theme and then we have coherence so coherence talks about um things being uh making sense and building on each other so there should be some um relevance to what you're talking about so the next action needs to be related to the first action when you think about interfaces right so there's a coherence and then finally you have plausibility so it needs to follow its own rules it needs to be believable um and that's like the fifth ingredient of the story now i'm going to show an example and we'll talk about what we think yeah feel free to always uh, question me like that gentleman just did i am not always correct or maybe you have a better way of saying it which is perfectly fine so 
Okay, so a chicken tries to cross the road and a truck approaches. I'm going with the chicken and road metaphor. <laughs> Sorry, this was meant to be fun, but you guys are so silent. So what happens next, guys? I'm going to tell you three endings, three, three stories, three mini stories, and then we'll talk about which ones we think was the best story. Yeah? First story, it's a magical chicken. It pulls out a balloon and it floats away. Okay, so the beginning was the chicken was trying to cross the road. It magically pulled out a balloon and it floated away. That was the end. Next one, the dead chicken. So obviously, chicken's going to cross the road. Chicken doesn't know what he's doing or she's doing, sorry. And uh, gets hit by the truck. But then, there's also a red fish for some reason. And then the last story, the tough chicken. So this chicken, she's had enough of humans always, you know, disrupting the way she crosses the road. So she pulls out a stop sign and goes like, hey, stop. And the truck screeches to a halt. And then she helps the chicks cross as well, not just herself. So there's two, three stories. Now, which one do you guys think was the most satisfying story? And why? Anyone? A, B, or C? Show of hands, A. A? Okay. What about B? B? Well, you can't raise your hand for the same thing. Come on. It's either A, B, or C. You can't pick two, okay? Just pick one ending that you like and stick with it. No one? B? And how about C? Greater purpose. Ah, great. Okay. Okay, so we, we like the hero, yeah, in the story, or the heroine in this case, the chicken. So why was it that we liked the stories we liked, right? I'm going to break it down by story ingredients. So the first plot, it had an arc, like beginning, middle, and end. It changed the situation because suddenly it was tense. Will the chicken get hit? Will it get hit? And then she flew away. So it changed the situation. There was some coherence because the theme was magic. I said that at the beginning. So the action that happened also followed. So I set your expectation and kind of followed, right? Uh, what was missing was a greater theme. There was no greater good that this chicken was serving. She was just trying to escape. And what was ob also obviously missing is plausibility. It's not really believable that a chicken is magical unless uh, we have been, you know, missing out on looking at magical chickens. The second one, the story ingredients had an arc, a beginning, a middle, and end. Some element of change, because it was alive, then it died. Then some, of course, there was definitely plausibility. You know chickens die in real life if they're going to get hit by a truck, right? I don't want to imagine that, but yeah, it happens. But it didn't have a greater theme. Again, it didn't serve any greater purpose. And coherence, yeah, I just mentioned a red fish, a red herring, if you will, right? So it's, it's like, huh, what? There, there are these elements of a plot which are there for no reason, which just throw you off, but don't serve any purpose. And just like, think about those interfaces where there are buttons that don't make any sense, but they're just there. But you're like, why is this even here? So going back to uh, the story, make sure that it has coherent and plausible elements and has a theme. So the last one, which we kind of, the majority of us liked, had actually four out of the five ingredients. Maybe plausibility was the only one that, where it was the weakest, but hey, in the future, there might be a superhero chicken. <laughs> so yeah, it had an arc, a change, a theme, coherence, and yeah, what it was missing was plausibility. So going back to when you build a story, whether it's for a presentation deck or it's telling the story of your onboarding tutorial, maybe, I don't know, could be anywhere, right? So. The idea is to ensure you have at least four of these ingredients as you build your story. A four out of five is good, but as many as possible so that uh, it stays relevant and you sort of build that theme 
overall and i think the theme is probably to me the most important aspect of this these five ingredients okay i'm now going into some tools what i'm calling tools to use through your uh, whatever you're designing for yeah so the first one it's borrowed from the idea of uh, story writing and also you can call this presentation design so it's about a narrative arc so i talked talked about an arc just now where is a beginning middle and end similarly this arc was uh, is basically a structure of complex narrative but it has several parts to that narrative and this structure was uh, created by this german playwright called gustav freytag and it's also called the freytag's triangle or freytag's triangle it has an exposition which is a start it has a rising action a climax falling action and conclusion or denouement so these are all your steps to the arc we just hang on to this because we'll be using it in another activity later next one storyboarding which i spoke about with the airbnb example uh this is a very useful tool i'm going to share an example in a minute about how i used it basically the purpose of the storyboard is to tell a story in concise pictures um sometimes you use words along with the story sometimes it doesn't so this is an example of my bad sketching but uh, <laughs> i use this right so in my day to day i had to explain a prototype now i wanted to move away from everyone just staring at a screen so what i did is i um set up the stage to tell my story so i drew a quick storyboard about search because i work at property guru it's about finding listings and we were designing an experience for what the search landing is going to look like it's so it's uh, so to set the context up i connected it back to our personas so we have internal personas that we use but sometimes personas get a bad rep i guess they don't get used enough but this is one way you can incorporate it into your day to day so i kind of went back to our persona and i was saying okay if these two characters were in a real life situation talking to each other going like hey we are going to get married soon we really need to think about this house that we want to move into right so that was kind of the context in the first frame then the the guy goes like ah don't worry about it honey i'm going to google some stuff i i look look at it as we you know i go to work or something and then so once he uh, then i was talking about where how is he searching and what are the keywords that he's sort of typing and then finally it's like a google results and obviously this is a vision so you're like hey our ranking is quite high <laughs> and they find the link and then after this i spoke uh, actually showed them a prototype on the phone of where this story connects to so that sort of made my um audience in the room more engaged they sort of woke up they were like ha huh, okay i can see this happening and then because they were already thinking about the characters that i explained they sort of connected with that while they were looking at the prototype or i kept referring back to these characters so it's like think about the story and think about the characters in the story and then look at the prototype that's a good way to build empathy for your end users even if you don't want to use a persona you can actually use real users that you did research with right so it's pretty cool i think okay then the rule of threes so basically in uh, in most of storytelling and in many other forms you will see the number 3 repeat like a beginning a middle and end so you will see it in say signals ready set go you will see it in uh, story books goldie locks and the three bears three words that are iconic sex drugs and rock and roll yeah okay sorry uh, and then this is a very cool ad campaign that used the power of three in their narrative so it's like just without words they were just kind of showing how that works this is an example or oh, oh, sorry the pots there that's an example from interior design they use the rule of 3 for decorative elements on a wall uh, or a shelf for example there's just three things because it draws your eyes and then this is an example of an interface from property guru shameless plug uh yeah so we have 
answer a question, upload your documents, finance. So th this was about yeah, explaining the steps in three steps, right? So as easy as possible. So why is three such a easy number? So one is too little, two is just enough, but but it's just comparing one against two, so it's an unfair advantage. And then three, three is just right, just like Goldilocks. I sound like Goldilocks. But yeah, it's, it's basically our sort of human psyche to evaluate against two options and then we sort of convince ourselves, okay, the third one is just right for me. So this is another useful thing to think about as you're building your story. Yeah? And then there is the Hitchcock's rule. This is borrowed from filmmaking. So Alfred Hitchcock, he was a very renowned filmmaker. And he used this rule while he, oh, sorry, I, I missed one thing. Yeah, uh, the last element sort of breaks the pattern set by the first two. That was uh, another part of this rule of three, which is, so ready, set, are like anticipation, go, breaks that pattern. And similarly, Sex and drugs are vices. Rock and roll could be a vice. I don't know. I mean, there's examples like that. So, so you can think about one and two being somewhat similar and third one to sort of drive your attention there. When you think about pricing, for example, right, uh, on pricing of products in a website, you have standard, you have um, the enterprise version, and then there's a pro version. So that's the just right for me option. Yeah, sorry, going back to the Hitchcock's rule. So any size within your frame needs to be important to the story you're telling at that moment, right? So what does that mean? And uh, for example, you use a tight shot when you're capturing the story details. So if this was a story about a cooking show, showing the ingredients matters. So it's a tight shot that you use to zoom into those details. Then you use a medium shot to show a relationship between two uh, subjects in the story, right? So if the same, if it's not a cooking show, it was a show about a guy making uh, dinner for his wife because it's their anniversary. Maybe you have a calendar, it's a bit grayed out, you can't see it, but there's a calendar in the foreground marked with their anniversary date and in the background you see the guy cooking. So that's how you show the relationship between subjects. And then finally, you have a wide shot, maybe when you need to show the activity of the guy and then the room. Uh, an example would be if, if this again was a cooking show and there are more than one actors in the play, then you, uh, in the story, then you sort of show where they are in relation to their surroundings. So this can be applied as well to sort of uh, interface design or motion design. <coughs> where you bring in elements that are very important into focus first when you are um, designing something. And then if you need to show connection between two objects, so the relativity, you can use the medium shot. So you sort of zoom out a bit. And then finally, the wide shot talks about the entire narrative and how you frame that in a website, right? So it's like three levels that you zoom in and out when you're designing something. Okay, next activity. <laughs> Looking, you guys look like you are going to fall asleep, so I need to wake you up again. Uh, so the activity is a wordless story. Again, you're going to need post-its for this one. Or, or if you want, you can draw three boxes on your piece of paper and go for it. Uh, what we're going to do is, I'm going to give you an instruction in the next slide. Uh, these are just prompts. Feel free to find a different in instruction if you like. And uh, you select an action from that list, and you're going to draw it in three frames, but no words. Yeah. So for example, if it's scramble eggs, this is one example, right? So if you're scrambling eggs is your action, how can you explain it in three frames without any words? Remember the, the rules that we just spoke about, the Hitchcock rule, the uh, power of three, and obviously you're storyboarding, so there's three things. I want you to think about that as you're sketching. Yeah, and we have 10 minutes for this activity. If you have any questions, be, feel free to ask me.
love it. Yeah, you can use these prompts or if you think it's too complex, you want a simpler action, feel free to select whatever you like. But three, three frames, if you want, use three different post-its to sketch that out or you draw three boxes and draw within them, but no words. as easy as it looks. Huh? Mm. I like how you incorporate the frame element. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I see the tight short, medium, the wide. Very nice. going guys okay yes how are you good nervous yeah. good <laughs> of course care deeply <laughs> later i'll share the story of how i came up with a presentation <laughs> If 
you like, you can sketch more than one story as well. They're not limited to one. Like if one story is too easy, feel free to sketch two or more. Five more minutes. Feel free to share the stories across pe uh, the tables, right? You can share it with each other. This time, group sharing. guys doing <laughs> having fun yeah i'm a, i'm a terrible uh, sketcher you, you saw my sketching earlier i'm no i'm no ace at it either no pixar uh, career in my future <laughs> which real estate company do you work for property guru property. is this the local yeah Singapore? yeah so, uh, actually we're in five markets in southeast asia oh, okay. how big is your uh, team design team is at 10 people right now I have a friend work in property group. Oh, is it? In which part of the business? Uh, product manager. Product His manager. His name is Victor. Oh, I know him. Yeah. Ah, okay. Work with him all the time. Really? Yeah. Uh, small world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. Singapore is very small. It's a tight frame. <laughs> How is it going, guys? Go away. <laughs> Sorry, go where? Yeah, it's going good. nowhere. Oh, I mean, go, going well. Oh, going well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's cool. I like how your story is like the the oh suddenly something right, changed. Right, right. You're flipping the transformation yeah. to the end. I like it. Uh, slightly unexpected. Very uh, nice. Go to somebody. To go that's that's cool. I think unexpected stories are the best, right? Plot twist. <laughs> nice. See, I made this wordless because I know handwriting is always a problem. No? People don't understand, so... And it's actually harder to be simple, believe it or not, I mean... You think the actions are simple and then you're like, oh, but, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, but the simpler you make it, the uh, easier it is to tell the story, right? That's the point of the exercise. I will mention that later. <laughs> I hope you're having fun. Feel free to ask me any questions if you are, if you have questions. 
needs two hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we thought we were ready. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is the end for that, right? Yeah, the end for that. I agree. Can you just show us the picture? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, everyone's looking at their phones. Did you guys tell each other your stories already? Oh, you did. <laughs> Don't be shy. Come on. You're going to you're going to pair up for the last activity. So make friends. <laughs> I I noticed that lots of people are choosing the wine story, huh? Everyone likes to drink wine. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm back. Hello, guys. I hope uh, by now you had a chance to sort of go around and share your stories. Uh, the point of the exercise was to make you sort of think about how simple, how, how to keep it simple and uh, explain it in three steps, which is not actually quite easy. And uh, another point I mentioned earlier about plotting your story, this this sort this activity sort of covers that as well, that you had to plot where how to tell the story before you actually start drawing or you start imagining the plot as you go along. So keep that in mind when you're doing the same for anything you're designing. Okay. Next. Oops. <coughs> Sorry, can I get What did I do? Sorry, I think I screwed it up. My bad. You can switch back to the slide. Ah, okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, next portion is about emotion, right? So we looked at why storytelling matters, how to build the narrative of the stories, Next part that we're covering now is about adding emotion, which is sort of the core element of any story, at least I think so, because without feeling something for the stories, I think uh, it's hard to move forward or remember that story. So feeling actually connects to memory. Look at this picture. When you look at it, what do you feel? Scared? Scared, fear, like <gasps> surprise, all of that. Yeah, that's basically what you're feeling is the same emotions as what they are feeling, right? Looking at a picture sort of conveys that emotion. And uh, same thing, when you're listening to stories and connecting with them, you feel that emotional connect. Uh, as humans, we are basically the only species capable of creating and believing these fictional stories and concepts that don't have a physical reality necessarily. So um, basically, these, these fictional stories are anything from religion, corporations, human rights. These are examples of stories that in lots of people believe and then hence it becomes real. So in order to make the story real, you got to believe it first. Uh, and great products also make us feel things. This is a post from my timeline that Facebook's memory sort of reminded me like a few days before this event. I bought a bunch of things. I'm not necessarily a materialistic, like I, I, I don't care about shoes as much, but this reminded me how I used to be in my youth. So I was like, huh, I didn't know I cared about shoes enough to take a picture. But funny enough, I looked at the picture and then I was like, hey, I like those shoes. I, I, I would still wear those. I like shiny things. So yeah, uh, 
basically the great products make you feel things and great stories also make you feel things and this was a, a good example because facebook's feature is building on that emotional aspect right it it connects with the emotion of nostalgia and then sort of brings back uh, the memory of whatever it is that you posted about or facebook instagram all of them and uh, if you think about last pair of shoes you bought right or the last pair of whatever whatever you bought how do you feel and how would you feel about it in a few years time and in order to make those memories um sort of uh, the moments in those times relatable you got to make it into a memory and i i like this guy john mayer <laughs> so he says a lot of quotable things uh, he basically uh his quote is about making difficult things easy and because it's easy it also becomes memorable and that's kind of what we do as designers and uh, and connecting emotionally matters so i'm just going to touch upon the the theory behind where this came from right why why do we care about emotion so much in our current context this this phenomenon sort of started back in 1998 call it the rise of consumerism or experience economy that term was coined by two guys called joseph pine and james gilmore in their book and they spoke about this new trend of uh, this was new back in 1998 where coffee which was just a commodity was then sold back then just like products which you can find in any sort of local coffee shop but then starbucks sort of became the disruptor of that phenomenon because they offered not just coffee but like a space to hang out and that became part of their experience narrative and uh, what was interesting to note was the design value sort of increases as uh, as you go into experience so there's more thought put into the creation of that experience and so does the price right so whatever you're designing eventually translates to a business value uh let me see yeah and and basically oh sorry before i go into that successful products really tap into emotions uh emotions like delight desire surprise trust boldum if you think of all these words i'm sure products come to mind like for example boldum youtube right that was one of the main drivers of youtube back when it uh, started that people were bored and they just went to youtube to sort of elevate their boredom and things like delight so adding delightful elements to uh, a product i think instagram copied the story function for example copied borrowed from snap snapchat and uh, that sort of became their the, the next they took it to the next level by adding those delightful elements that sort of let you play around with things apart from the story right so they i think that to me is a successful example uh and then the last tool for what i'm going to talk about is the emotional journey i'm sure you guys already kind of use it maybe at some point uh which is your uh, journey mapping but the idea of this journey map came from this guy called kurt vonnegut he was a writer and his thesis actually failed where he explained the theory of misery and ecstasy so basically what he was trying to say is any story whatever it is can be plotted on a graph of going from ecstasy to misery and back up or anywhere on that graph so there's just two emotions going from middle uh, beginning so ecstasy to misery and then you have the beginning and the end so i'm showing an example of my favorite disney movie sorry i like disney uh, and uh, yeah this is the plot of lion king so it begins quite happy you know like you're showing the pride rock and all the animals bowing down and then it goes into a bit of a scary bit where simba and nala sort of get lost in the little place where they're not supposed to be but no no problem musa uh, mufasa sorry res- rescues him and uh, then things go really bad for a while because he dies and he's really emotional and he gets lost 
and then obviously he finds his way back up because he finds his friends in the jungle and then oh but everything's not right again because yeah nala comes and she's like hey you're forgetting what the purpose of your life is blah 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 and then they go they fight the war and he eventually becomes king so th- that's one way of looking at a narrative right so you you think about the ecstasy points and the pain points and then you plot out where the journey goes so last activity um this is supposed to be fun and we are using s- fairy tales because stories uh, so pair up with a person at your table and i will share the prompt list again after this slide and before i go into that what we're going to do is reimagine one aspect of that story which is a b- classic tale in a digital product format or service it could be anything it needs to be a product okay one aspect of that s- typical story and then we're going to map out the new story using the narrative arc and then the journey mapping tool so for example i'll show you the story of three little pigs first we map out what is that story going to look like in the context of a digital product so we all know the story three little pigs they built houses the wolf bothered them constantly eventually they built a house strong enough for the wolf to not be able to break it down and then he climbed down the chimney but then yeah they killed him and they lived happily ever after so that's a typical story now in the new story how do they spot the wolf they had a app and security cameras installed <laughs> yeah so they spot the wolf coming towards the houses suddenly because this is a magical story it's a fairy tale you're allowed to expand the plausibility suddenly they blast some really loud magical music and the wolf is stunned and not just that he turns into a mouse okay and then because the wolf is gone but now they have a mouse problem so the story sort of began like this now if i map out the pain points of the pig it began very badly because obviously they were being bothered by wolves hey we found a solution we'll install a camera we're going to kill that wolf or turn him into a mouse and then oh oh we have a mouse problem that's the pig story the reverse is true for the wolf yeah i can totally scare those pigs and i'm going to take over the houses but you know things didn't end so well for the pig uh, for the wolf either cuz things went bad and then you see the end now obviously you use journey mapping in your day to day to sort of map out different uh, experiences of different players in the experience of people who use your product so for me it's like agents and then property seekers we map out both those journeys but if we did it in this format you will see different uh, sort of crests and troughs and that's where you identify the opportunity areas right So here is your story prompt pair up on your table with one person you first plot out the narrative arc because you're going to decide which aspect of this story is going to be the digital product or service right and then you're going to map out a emotional journey of that Feel free to ask me questions if you want me to go back a few slides I can <laughs> Please spare up okay for this guys You want to play music again just a little I I realize that I'm going very fast maybe uh, so we will have some time to sort of do Q&A in the end if required or I end half an hour early <laughs> cuz I I don't know I think I rushed through some of my slides but I I imagined I would take more time to explain first time doing a workshop <laughs> Do you guys want to see the examples again yeah Okay. 
I hope you pick your story first. I'll just go back two slides. One more. Yeah, yeah. That's the example again, just for the first part. So you can look at how to plot the story. In my story, the security camera is the digital aspect. Obviously, there's also a magical speaker. It can be a physical or a digital product, up to you, but some aspect should be a product. Sketcher for the event. Nice so to she meet you. just had a missing yeah. component from your talk. Oh yeah, so sure. Which one? I came a bit late. I think there are like three big points in your talk. The third one is emotions. The second one is uh, narrative. Narrative. And the first one? First one is why do we need storytelling? Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> and then the fourth one is about the future. But oh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Sure. We've actually met before. I don't know if you remember. Last year, I was sitting next to you during the sketching. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I remember, obviously. Okay. That's, that's more important. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember sharing your sketches. Because oh, my yeah. uh, my manager at the time, Catherine, she was speaking. Yes. And then was. you were sketching. Yeah. So I was sitting right next to you. Oh. And I was like, huh. <laughs> oh, they say you have one for yourself. Yeah, that's. Because last year, when I was surreal, doing, people man. were taking, making sketches, but nobody was tagging us. Yeah, so I had yeah. to like, individually find like, who was sketching. But then yeah, we this is at least let's one, one person official. Do yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Awesome. Thanks. I'm, I'm Everything a little okay. ahead on time. I saw that. Just because I'm, I think I'm nervous, so I'm like going <laughs> too fast. But Okay, first of all, you don't seem nervous at all. I think you're killing it. Okay. But <laughs> I think your last one is at 11, right? Yeah, so I was yeah, supposed to. We started also a bit early, so mm -hmm. I, I'm giving them a little extra time for this yeah. and then we can do a bit of sharing again. Because I, I planned it such a way that there will be enough time in case I go fast.
to do this show and tell. So, so we still have that 11.20 to 11.30 Q&A in sure. case you feel like, yeah. I think that'll be nice. Yeah, that'll be nice. Have you gotten any feeling that they would like to ask questions? Uh, I'm not sure actually, I can't read the room. They're all so serious, man. <laughs> I think because most of them are. Uh, is this supposed to be like a. I don't think it is laugh a and have fun. SG, SG crowd. Uh, I think probably they don't know each other. So Indonesia, Malaysia. Maybe I should have done a. tell a story around the table. That was one of my other activities, but I wasn't sure, like, am I going to go too fast, too slow? Uh, no, I think first time, time doing a workshop. Perfect. They don't seem stressed. With so, so many people, so yeah. I'm like. It's just relaxed. not supposed to be stressful. Yeah, so they seem pretty relaxed. If you want, you can wrap up early and we can do the Q&A slightly up. Yeah. So don't like, yeah, run sure, by your I, I want to definitely do a, a, like give them until 10, 50-ish yeah. to finish this yeah. activity because we started at 10.30. Yeah. And uh, once they're done, I'll give them a 10 minute like share with each other. Yeah. The same like we did earlier. Right. So 11, you will be back on your track yeah. for the third activity. Exactly. Okay. No, actually, this is the last activity. Then oh, I have the, the closing. Okay, so, so I'll be done by 11.15 okay. and then we can So why don't we close just naturally the way you close and we'll do the Q&A right after you finish. Sure. So I'll let the MC know. Okay. okay. Yeah. Perfect. It's on my notes. <laughs> We are just discussing uh -huh. like uh, all the stories here. Right? What if we can't remember the plot? Can't remember the plot. Like, you see, for example, Puss in Boots were like, so twisted by the strike movie, and then uh, kind of like, what's wrong with this Then you may, anyway, you have to make up your story, yeah. so you can change it. Yeah. That's the that's like a fun part. part you can just ask them yeah, yeah, I plan to. Yeah, right after they yeah, are done. Yeah. the plot. Change the plot. What story did you guys pick? Uh, Goldilocks. Goldilocks, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I literally narrate that to my kids daily, almost. But yeah, but thinking of it in a product is quite fun. Yeah. It's <laughs> Maybe security system don't come into my house. <laughs> Maybe food delivery, because she ate up all his porridge, so they get food delivered to their house instead. Yeah, you can, there's so many opportunities. So you guys sketching or you're done? No, we just like talk about it. Okay, you have 10 more minutes. <laughs> yeah. I have a question, like, I'm wondering like, introducing this digital product, uh -huh. thing, where should we, is there a, a rule or is no. there anywhere? Anywhere, anywhere. Oh, the okay. plot twist can then come anywhere. Okay, so, <laughs> so when you brought up the, the thing. Yeah. Just to show how it's affected. Yes, correct. Changing. Yeah. So the idea is to figure out what's your story and then what are the people feeling as you do the story. So if you think of it in the context of designing something like a, I don't know, for Property Guru, I'll give you an example. The experience is to do a booking, right? So what are the steps to do that, uh, sorry, not booking, inquiry, to do an inquiry of a 
I see a listing, I want to inquire, talk to an agent. So overall the process is very long, but I can talk up, talk to like what is the building up part and then what's the falling down part. And then when you map out the emotion, you actually identify, okay, during this point, they are feeling like this. So what is the opportunity for us to fix that or improve that? So, so this is before or after the solution? After. After the solution. So yeah. this is to validate your solution? Kind of, yeah. But you can do it even when you're sort of hypothesizing uh, a future solution, right? So if you're building something that's never been built before, you can use this to plot what that, what that uh, story will be like and then what you think should be the emotion. Maybe then you validate with user research saying, hey, this is what we thought when we began and this is what the results are showing. So where's the gap? So then you improve. Yeah. One question. Sure, sure. So let's say multiple features, right? Yeah. So each feature would have this. Uh, it depends. If you want, you can map them as separate stories, but put the emotions in one big story and then sort of compare against A, B and C. Or you can do this separately for each one and do a big, bigger analysis. Many ways how you can translate this. I, I think it depends really on your creativity, how you want to use any of these tools because they're very open-ended and it's like that for a purpose because I don't know what you're designing. It's hard to go deep, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Side duck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so you have ecstasy and misery oh, yeah, and then you have ecstasy. beginning and end ah, yeah, okay. and then you plot the feelings of the character in your story through yeah. the process how's it going any questions you want to ask me I'm around if you don't know how this can be great sorry yeah that's the whole point supposed to be fun the rest of your day is like super serious uh, problem solving and uh, research so I was like this needs to be not so serious because yeah if I tell you like a fun thing you'll remember it right that's a point of my <laughs> That you're drawing the screens. Is it? <laughs> it happens next. It's beautiful. Yes, of yeah. course. This one can be based. We can solve the problem. Yeah, we can solve the problem. But that's why we need. <laughs> yeah, all of them have some aspect. You can totally think of a product and the. Uh, yeah, that's great. If you have multiple, feel free to do multiple mapping. I mean, totally. Pick the. I, I don't know, pick something fun of the list that you have. The one that's most twisted. Usually, those are the most fun ones. more minutes and then we'll do a quick sharing yeah
glasses. Thank you. Keep it closer. Oh. I'm sure she got one with while I'm talking. I just want a nice picture after to remember. <laughs> guys we are nearly on time um, we're going to do a quick round of sharing i would like some volunteers per table again um, to share about one uh, story that for each of these from each of your tables and share what the product is and what's the what was the plot i would like to know the plot shall we begin okay how about we start at the back and work our way up to the front. Yeah, that corner. So we, uh, before you begin, just tell us which story you picked and then uh, share. Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk. Cool. So we had uh, yeah, a little variation from the original story. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, Jack was really hungry. Okay. And all he had was a cow. Okay. So that was from the original story. Yeah. But um, he decided that um, you know he would trade the cow for an iPhone. Instead. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. And then while he's using his phone, he got a notification that says one free eggs. <laughs> golden eggs. One free golden eggs and then just click to continue sales. Uh -huh. And it's a it's an ad. Oh, so he clicked on an ad <laughs> for golden ad. eggs. Yeah. Okay. For golden <laughs> eggs. That led him to the maps which he had to um, navigate. Navigate. Okay. And then uh, he found eventually a giant's house okay. who is sleeping and then he took the eggs uh -huh. and then actually the giant is a giant cow. Oh, <laughs> plot who, twist, yeah, nice. Who, who got angry because he sold yeah. his baby cow. Oh. So um, yeah, the giant tried to eat him. So wait, the cow tries to eat Jack? Yeah, the giant cow. Okay. Tried to kill Jack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that was the climax. Uh, and then um, he had this option to um, throw his iPhone to the mouth of the cow. And then it self-destructed. Okay. <laughs> wow, a lot, lot yeah, of plot yeah. twists. Are you sure it's an iPhone, not a Samsung? I don't know. Yeah. Things like it's stored, an right? <laughs> yeah. Right, Note, Note 7, inch. correct. So, um, yeah, all this tech <coughs> trying nice. to help him. So the cow died and uh, he got his free golden eggs. Oh, okay. And he bought a bread. So, happy story for Jack, not so much the cows in the city. There's a lot of emotions going on. Like, <laughs> wow, okay. From, from like heart very beats. low to very high in an instant. Nice. Just escalated quickly. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. So. What would you buy with the eggs? Uh, bread. Bread. But he bought bread. Uh, that we saw this first issue that he was uh, Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> should he buy like, more more iPhones? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, go, it's golden eggs. He, uh, yeah, he could opportunity to continue good. the story. Yeah, yeah sure. There's no Apple store, so he wasn't able to buy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Anyone else want to share? Me. Yes. Sure. You should share. Yes. Is it the same story or a different? No, one? different story. Okay. Cool. okay. Hello, guys. So our story is called. The Ugly Duckling and Dear Future Selfie PM. Yeah. So Dear, uh, Dear Future Selfie, it's an app that lets you see your future self in oh. selfie. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story of the Ugly Duckling, but the Ugly Duckling was not really ugly. Yeah. Um, she, she was being called ugly because she doesn't belong to you know, the group of ducks mm. who are calling her ugly, right? So, okay, on the first part of her story, we see the Ugly Duckling. Can you hold it? <laughs> okay, so we see the ugly duckling uh -huh. and um, we see um, the other ducks teasing her. 
Okay. And then, um, okay. So the other doubling, which really assigned it, right, the least one, so was uh, was we call that we, and then um, one of the ducks or one of the ducklings told her to, oh my god, girl, um, go take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Competition reality, right? And then um, on the second part of the story, the ugly duckling takes a selfie. Um, on the climax, we see uh, the ugly duckling coming to terms with reality ah. after she sees. Oh, it's her like that aging self. app. Yeah. You see your so future self. Nice. She sees an ad uh, on the camera. Okay. Uh, future self app, download now. And then she downloaded it from Google Play. Um, she, um, she, in uh, she installed it on, uh, into her phone. And then she took a selfie. And then on the last part of the um, story, <coughs> we see her uploading the picture, the selfie that she took. And then as we can see, um, it shows her not as an ugly duckling, not as a baby sign it, not as a sign it but as a swan. Uh -huh. So, and you know, after she posted it on social media, she got 100 loves, hard hearts, right. and 200 wows. So social validation solved yes. everything. And then, yeah, it was also sort of like, like an enlightenment for everyone, nice. because um, everyone finds out that she wasn't really a sign, uh, uh, a duck. She wasn't a duck. She was a swan. Okay. And then we see a comment saying, oh my god, girl, you're a swan. <laughs> so, nice. that's her story. I love it, I love it. Good. Clap for him. Okay, how about this table? Sure. Can you help me out? <laughs> okay. um, hi. Um, we did the story about um, the little red riding hood. So in this case, it was actually the little invisible riding hood. Um, so yeah, um, first, um, the little red, the little invisible riding hood um, ordered um, cookies from Uber Eats because in the original story she baked them, and um, but she wanted to deliver the um, cookies herself to the grandma, so she delivered the cookies, but she had an invisible cloak on, so she thought that the wolf would be able to uh, to see her and follow her around, but actually the wolf had uh, put a tracker in the cookies. And it's actually able to uh, to track her through an app. <laughs> and so what, yeah, was the wolf the delivery man? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> did the wolf deliver the food? Because how did he put the track? No, no. Um, probably he was like, um, <coughs> you know, he knew the Uber oh. Eats guy or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um, so she got to the, uh, grandma's house, and um, the wolf was already there, but the wolf had actually shrunk on the grandma with a, like a poison yeah. and um, hit her like somewhere because she's not really little. And um, yeah, and then, but the right hood um, had like a glasses that could detect, um, or like has face recognition glasses. So she could directly detect that the wolf was in the grandma. Hey, you're not my grandma. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah. Like oh, and then she and he directly wanted to eat her, but then the woodsman came, and if you wanna, <laughs> the, wood, the woodman is just using an app that detects if someone needs help. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but um, he also had um, the the liquid, the point, the other poison to help um, enlarge the grandma. So he also saved the grandma in that case. And yeah, the red, the invisible riding hood um, met the grandma. But then, um, plot twist: the wolf stole the the cloak and used it to run away. So yeah, and the end right. was really. <laughs> and I did not expect that note. <laughs> Is it a bad note? I mean, I, it sounded happy to me. The wolf got to run away. He didn't die, right? Yeah, but then he's still out there somewhere too. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. I see what you mean. Cool, cool. I like I like the AI recognition of faces. <laughs> very, very nice. Anyone else want to share on this table before I move on? Yes, we want to share. Go, go for it. Go for it. He <laughs> started off. Okay, so we're from the Goldilocks team. Mm. <laughs> You can see this, which you can. You can explain it. That's why you ha okay. you have the mic. So the first story it started um, when 
uh, Goldilocks uh, has grown into a pretty woman. And pretty woman. <laughs> yeah. And she travels the world. And then she found an alchemist in a desert. And the alchemist gave her a map to find gold. Map to gold. Yeah. Ooh. And that's what the purpose of Goldilocks is to try to unlock the gold. And then once you try to uh, read the map, the map, yeah, she can't understand the map because it's too ancient. And then the she read the map and googles it, and she found the place to find the gold by the Google map. So she travels the world, follows the translated map. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She translates the map with Google. And finds the bear's house. Yeah. Okay, but here's a little backstory that you won't know till yet. <laughs> because one day when she finds the bears inside the house after you know she eats the porridge, you know trespasses onto the beds, she sees the bears and then they meet each other's eyes. <laughs> and the bear sees the girl's eyes. Wait a minute. You look like the hunter who killed my son. <laughs> and then the Goldilocks sees. Hey, that's the key to the gold wrapped around the bear's neck. So they get into a battle, and then, ah, oh, the bear wins, and they cook Goldilocks. But apparently, Goldilocks' phone, it has find my iPhone. So the hunter father comes back and bam, takes revenge. The end. The end. Nice. Nice. Very nice. How about, yeah. We come back to you guys. <laughs> okay, I, I think we'll run behind if I give two stories per table. So maybe I stick to one story in that corner and then we'll work our way here. One story? Anyone? No? Okay, no, I'm not forcing. Okay. So the story that we choose is the ugly duckling. Uh -huh. And um, my friend is going to talk. So the ugly duckling, so she is like lost because she, uh, her friends didn't want to uh, play with her. Mm -hmm. And then she's going alone to the uh, forest and then she look at the bird that's uh, above Delivering parcels. Yeah. Delivering what? Oh, parcels. Okay, parcel delivering birds. Okay, yeah. I get it. And then uh, she look at the. Uh, she's met with the bird uh -huh. and, and asking what kind of parcels that we delivers. And oh, uh, I delivers uh, costumes. Okay. And you can buy the uh, costumes in Amazon. Okay. <laughs> Anima. Yeah, I need Amazon. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and then she's uh, open, uh, downloading the apps and then buying the uh, costume in Animizons. Uh huh. And then she become a celebrity. Okay. And everybody love her because of her costumes. Okay. And so then after that, because she, uh, she's very popular and uh, she's turned into a swan, and then she becomes. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, now she has a rally for a world and hashtag ugly duck is a popular. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay. So the f future is bright for the ugly duckling. Yeah, yeah. it's a trend. Everyone right. Want to what about trend. her friends? Are they also now hashtagging? Yeah. See the In the future? Yeah, they're all for her. Okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> Happy yeah. story. Anyone else want to share a different story, one that's not been shared? Uh, Puss in Boots, anyone? No one? Okay. Okay, I guess not so popular. Uh, how about Jack in the Beanstalk, anyone? Go for it. Alright, so Jack wanted to get rid of his cow or he wanted to trade it. So he posted an ad on Carousel. Um, and then he also saw an ad for magic beans. Okay. So he replied to the ad and then um, 
he actually got a verification, or he was kind of skepti skeptical. Um, so he did see that the, the Magic Bean seller was verified, uh, and five out of five stars. Really thank God for, for verification. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, and then he met up with a guy in real life and traded. And then his mom was like, what is this? This is so strange. But then uh, he assured his mom, we have a, there's a return policy. So after 30 days, if the beans don't grow, uh, we can get our cow back. Okay. So his mom was <laughs> calm about that. And then they planted the beans. And afterwards, uh, he did climb the beanstalk and noticed that there was a giant that was sleeping up in the, up in the clouds. Uh, so what he did was he took a meditation app on his iPhone and then um, it continued to let the giant sleep. So okay. no worries there, the giant didn't wake up. Okay. And rather than climbing down the beanstalk because he was so, so tired, uh, he ended up calling a private chartered plane from, uh, from his iPhone app. Okay. And wow, this is a powerful iPhone app. <laughs> Is it like grab? It does everything in one app. Okay, fine, get and it. And then well, once he got down, uh, the golden goose was laying golden eggs, and all it was halfway ever after. Okay, cool. So, what would you say is the climax of this story? Uh, we were kind of debating that. I think for us, we ended up saying it was when he found the the golden goose. Found a goose. Okay. Yeah, and it's then like it's victory. Yeah, it was I like the sauce. highlight. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. Anyone else? Different story? Uh, Red Riding Hood? Go for it. Oh, wait. We'll come back to you. Oops, it's off. Just hold it. Hello. <laughs> So for Red Riding Hood, we actually uh, started off the story with her mom giving her a uh, iPhone that actually says that, oh, it's a dangerous world out there, so take this to protect yourself. And she was like, okay. So when she was going out uh, to her grandma's house, she realized after uh, entering the house that her grandma looks weird. So she actually used the iPhone app to uh, uh, to scan her grandma and realize that it's not recognizing as a human, it's actually a wolf. Ah. So, uh, the, so the, the fake face scanning feature, is it? Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, she kind of like uh, tricks the wolf saying that she wants to take a photo of the wolf, but actually it's a face scanning feature. And then it uh, just reads like, not human. And so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not human danger. So uh, the moment the phone detected that it was uh, danger, uh, knives, cannons, guns all come out of the phone. Okay. And uh, starts attacking the wolf. Okay. So to make a good situation out of the, a bad situation, um, the guns and the knives kind of like meet, she kind of like meet a catering business out of the wolf. Oh. Uh, meat. So basically she used Instagram to sell saying that she's she's like having a wolf meat catering business. Wow. Yeah. I think the wolf's mom should have warned them that it's a nasty world out there you get become wolf meat. Yeah, but it's making a good a good situation out of bad situation. So and she's also making money. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Okay, thanks. I guess last one, one story here. Yeah. You guys, we, we can discuss the story after story this as well. And the red riding hood. So the girl, she has to meet her grandma and her parents want her to meet her grandma, but she didn't want. She wants to meet the woodsman at the mall. Ah. Uh, so she's not really happy. Okay. So she's going through the wood and, the, and she meet the wolf. And she chatted with the wolf and she uh, asked him to subscribe to Replace Me app. It means that the wolf will go to meet the grandma instead of the girl. Oh, okay, okay. So substitute. Uh, substitute. Got it. Yes, it's, a, it's an app where you, want, you don't want to go to a place and you send someone, somebody <laughs> else. Nice. So uh, the wolf, he go to the grandma. <laughs> and the girl, she can go to the mall with the woodsman. Nice. So she's really happy with the climax. And when the wolf is going to meet the grandma, he do a selfie like that. You can prove that he's with the grandma right. and he didn't eat her. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So yes, the wolf is not the best at the end because he didn't eat, but he has a new friend. Okay, so the grandma and the wolf become friends in the. Yes, and end. the grandma is happy because 
she asked somebody to speak to. Nice, nice. Cool. Okay, I think we can stop unless we want one last story or did you have enough? And I leave you guys to decide. You want to hear one more story? Yes? No? Yes? yes? yes. Okay, <laughs> go for it. Last story, last story. That, that table is full of stories, huh? I like it. <laughs> oh, more red riding. Okay. So, um, we choose uh, red riding wood. Uh, so, at first, uh, red riding wood is to walk in the uh, forest, but she got lost. So, she used Google Maps. And then the wolf saw, he, uh, saw her um, going to the grandma's place. So, the group, uh, uh, the, the wolf uh, took grab. <laughs> so he can go there faster. Nice. So um, when Red Riding Hood reaches um, Grandma's place, um, she was very worried because the wolf came into the house. Though um, she didn't know that the wolf and the grandma was just eating food they ordered from Food Panda. Okay. <laughs> so they began friends and then they asked that the wolf could stay over because they offer Airbnb. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> how, how many products can he place in this story? So, since they became friends in the morning, they both went out together, Wolf and uh, Red Riding Hood, and they decided to play Pokemon Go. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, and a lot of product placements. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I hope you guys had fun doing this activity. Uh, earlier someone was asking me how do I use this in a real life situation at that table over there and I was talking about um, the triangle, the free tag triangle. You can sort of use it as a basis of any user journey and break it down step by step. And then if you have multiple users of your product, like if you have, uh, in the world of Property Guru, we have agents, we have property seekers, and then we have uh, develop property developers, right? So there's three players in the story, and uh, three actors in the story, and each of them have their own narrative that they want to do or achieve. And then it's interesting to plot them all in that uh, emotional graph of uh, ecstasy to misery and then sort of see how all the stories come together and that really leads to opportunities and ideas, right? So in each of your stories, if when you plot that thing uh, emotionally, you can actually find areas where you can insert another product or another feature or something else that will solve the pain point in a useful way, yeah? Okay. Coming to a close, I'm just going to talk about what I think is the future of storytelling. Uh, I think that in the future, your communication skills are going to be even more vital, right? It's, it's kind of a no-brainer, but why I think that is as products and their experiences get more immersive, like, I mean, many of you had, in fact, thought about using AR in your storylines and uh, that that technology is already very accessible and that's going to make things more Im more immersive than what it is already so vr ar and many more such experiences will become a norm which is probably at the moment uh, in in uh, southeast asia with the speed of internet improving drastically and access to phones now this technology also becomes accessible so how would you communicate those stories is up to us, right? And then I think that in the future, things are going to get more connected, uh, not just connected in a way that it's all connecting to a Wi-Fi or whatever. I mean connected in the plot line of the experience, right? So I, I think from the experience economy, people realize that um, you're not coming to buy a product, you're actually buying the experience. But what happens when you have multiple devices, multiple touch points, then you need the story to flow. The message of the brand needs to connect everywhere. So I think in the future as well, that's going to be very important. 
and and devices will talk to each other as well and then the last one i think the future is going to be about elevating the product if if you think about the maslow's hierarchy the topmost one is about appealing to your sense of self purpose if you uh, like an example i shared earlier about sustainability uh, greta thunberg she brought that up in the media right now and more products are going to come up which sort of need to appeal to a person's sense of self for a greater purpose to change the narrative of where we are going as a race right of humans like i know it's a bit dramatic but <laughs> um i think it's like if you think about where is the world headed and if it's a very bad ending or a happy ending it's all up to us how we build that story and i'm i'm making sure we have empathy and connecting with those stories we have the opportunity as designers to shape those stories uh last one is an example of a uh, immersive dining experience which i came across uh, this is a restaurant in shanghai i don't know if anyone from shanghai is here but it's called ultraviolet and what they do differently is it's not just a dining it's exclusive dining so it's only 10 people can sort of dine together at a time and uh, the whole room that you sit in sort of matches the mood and the uh, taste so so it becomes a multi sensorial experience right so that i also think is towards the future of most experiences it's going to be about appealing to more than one sense so not just visual it's what you hear what you smell what what you're eating so this was a very good example of uh, how they build it um in real life all of it coming together so yeah storytelling in the future can also not just sit back like in the past we are used to advertising telling us the story of the brand where things were one sided you were they were telling the story you were hearing the story now it's becoming more about interacting with the story and there's more opportunities in the future to think about weaving those stories together of the brand of the user of the business everything um Yep, yeah, with that we reached the end. <laughs> and uh we'll have we have some time for Q&A. So if you have any questions we can discuss now or if you feel shy to ask we can always talk in person later as well. Do you want any questions around the room? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Alexa. Nice to um, meet you. Nice to meet you. Um I still don't understand about the rules of 3. Okay. Can you give uh, us like more real examples in okay. design? Okay. Sure. Thank you. So, uh one example that comes to mind, I think I shared it on my slide was uh, how do you explain the usage of a product in say three steps or you break it down into three actions this is particularly great for when you do onboarding experiences right uh, in order to not overwhelm the user with multiple things about the product you find three things you want to say right about your product that's really great that's really strong and then sort of bring that out using the power of uh, the rule of three because i think as humans we are hearing one and two which are similar and the third one that breaks the pattern is very interesting so if if say the first two uh, screens in that onboarding are informational and the third one makes you do an action like create your first listing or whatever so that can be a sort of an example of where you can use that any other questions No, nothing. Everyone understood. Then I'm very happy. Hi, um, I just hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Jasmine. Uh, and I just thought of a question. Um, because I think you gave quite good examples on how to uh, apply hitchcock hitchcock's rule to um 
like filming a cooking video and things like that. Sure. But uh, are there any other like real world examples, um, like let's say when you're designing or prototyping or doing a wireframe that you can also kind of apply um, Hitchcock's rule, uh, this storytelling tool sure. to your product? Sure. So, uh, okay, I'll give you two examples, one in a digital sense and one in a non-digital sense. So first one, if you think about the interactions in a, with an app, right, you think about motion design in the context of Hitchcock's rule. So the first rule is about bringing things into focus uh, using a tight shot, right? So maybe it could be something like um, making the action most prominent, so your eyes are drawn there first, and then it could be the next step is about showing where does this belong, right? Uh, in the context of, say, I'm going back to listings just because my head is in that space. But let's say I'm creating a listing of, of Airbnb. And uh, if in the first screen, it's about looking at how to create a listing. So all the focus of my attention is there. But then in the context of showing where these listings appear, I can show against multiple listings or like a, it's explaining in a tutorial, right? So it's like showing where does this listing belong? And then the third one can be about create your first listing. So uh, or, or a wider shot would be in that context, probably not applicable, uh, applicable sorry, for, for this scenario. I, I think it, it's hard to say generally, but like you can use it in motion design. I, that's one example that comes to mind. And then when it comes to say, uh, 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 exhibition space, right? You're designing uh, spatial design for an exhibition. You can choose to put certain things in the way of the user as they walk through and create sort of heat maps around the room saying, here's where I want you to focus. So everything is going to be in your view. Then things are spaced apart. So you walk around and make them move. And then, yeah, that way you have a relationship between the object and the viewer as well. I think. Yeah, these are two examples that come to mind. I'm sure I can can find many more. And also, these tools are intentionally open-ended that I mentioned because you can use them in different ways. It's hard to explain uh, with each of your context. But if you think about the thing that you design, I'm sure you can find a connection uh, back to the tool and how to use it. I guess we're done. Any any more questions? Sorry, before we close. Feel free to. Oh yeah, there at the back. Oh yeah, sure. Favorite storytelling design experience. Putting me on the spot. <laughs> I think, OK, for me, because in, I'm looking at the recent past, designing the experience of this workshop is my immediate story that comes to mind. Because I spent close to three months going back and forth, figuring out what exactly it is that I want to convey. And then I created a prototype. So if I look at my story arc, it began with uh, Kuldeep reaching out to me saying, hey, do you want to do a workshop? And then I was like, yes, of course. because great opportunity for me to grow my skills but and also share what I wanted to talk about. And then the next rising action was like, OK, I'm going to build this narrative. What do I do now? I started putting stuff together. And then the climax, I sort of tested it with uh, designers in my team. And then it was like, oh, no, I don't quite understand it. It's so serious. Why, why do you make your workshop so serious? It's like, oh, shit, that's not how I am as a person. I'm, I'm I try not to be serious all the time. So obviously, my falling action then was like, OK, let me rethink everything. And then today, we're here. Obviously, you see the end product. So yeah, that's my storytelling experience. Yeah? Uh, so just very quickly, what sure. is the uh, emotional journey slide that you showed where there? Yeah. Uh, is there a particular rule or anything worth noting for us as designers? Um, 
for the in intersection points for each uh, shareholder in the story or, or each character in the story. Yeah. Is there anything worth noting for us? Like, where's, where's the point where each character in the story is the happiest? Right. Yeah, so, so that would be, uh, so I mentioned it earlier, I'm just repeating it. So his question was, there's an emotional journey and there are multiple characters and they all have a plot line. Where do they connect is your question, right? Yeah, yeah so the, the opportunity over there is to identify where things are going really bad for one person and the other is sort of okay. Then you sort of figure out prioritization becomes a outcome of this, right? It helps you prioritize who, which user should we focus on first and then how do we design something in connection to the two. So that could be one application of that. Yeah, sure. Okay, I guess we're done a bit early. So, yeah. so thank you. I hope, I hope you had a good time, guys. Yeah.